this tutorial that I have very happy news and very excited to share it with you that is as you all requested we are going to have the clinical roundup from today onwards yes we are going to take different clinical scenarios and discuss it in very short lectures with maximum possible resources yes and today we have the condition known as the femoral acetabular impingement do you know what femoral acetabular impingement and there are two types of femoral acetabular impingement that is the cam impingement and pincer and latest study shows that there is one more that is the pincer uh, combined impingement cam pincer and combined we are going to study how to distinguish between cam pincer and combined with theoretical knowledge with symptoms as well as with x-ray diagnosis so pay attention to my channel and if you haven't subscribed please click the subscribe button so that you are updated with all the latest development in our channel this is Tony's tutorial and today we are, are going to have the discussion on femoral acetabular impingement. Femoroacetabular impingement. The name itself is self-explanatory. It means or it can be defined as a clinical syndrome in which there is an abnormality, there is an anatomical abnormality between the hip joint, jo the hip joint that is the femur and the acetabulum. And of course if there is an anatomical abnormality, what happens? It results in abnormal contact between femur and acetabulum so that is the definition of femoral acetabular impingement it is a clinical syndrome characterized by abnormalities between femur and acetabulum that can result in abnormal contact between the same femur and acetabulum especially during hip motion right and as every impingement syndrome this syndrome can result in various manifestations in the hip joint it can result in labral tear, it can result in articular cartilage damage, it can result in bone friction between the bone and it can result in reduced range of motion etc. The most common feature or the most common characteristic, characterized, uh, characteristics of this femoroacetabular impingement is the effect in the glenoid the labrum the acetabular labrum not the glenoid labrum the acetabular labrum the damage to the labrum is one of the most significant manifestation of this femoroacetabular impingement need not worry we are going to discuss it one by one that is femoroacetabular impingement can be classified into two types first one is the cam impingement right remember camel cam impingement and second one is it is the pincer impingement cam and pincer and you have a third type that is the combined impingement combined or mixed impingement right if you know cam and pincer you can definitely tell what is the combined I will give you a hint like for remembering the cam impingement you remember C C stands for capital that means there is a pro capital refers to the femur so that means in cam impingement the abnormality will be between the femur <coughs> in cam impingement the abnormality will be on the femur so P denotes the pelvic bone let it denote okay so that means the abnormality will be between the acetabulum so you studied so we studied what is femoroacetabular impingement and what is cam impingement in cam impingement the problem is with the femur in pincer impingement the problem is within the acetabulum there can be only problem between femur and acetabulum that is the the articular structures of the hip joint so if you remember cam you can denote and you can write what it is the pincer impingement cam stands for c stands for capital capital refers to the femur and combined impingement means what there is a combination of cam and the pincer that is the problem can be with the femur also the problem can be with the acetabulum too right that that's right 
So that is the third type, that is the combined impingement or mixed impingement. Now let us see one by one. The first one is our camp impingement. The first one is the camp impingement. Camp, right. As I told you, you remember it has C4, the capital. So the problem is with the femur, the femoral head, okay. The head of the femur is having the problem, head and neck of the femur. What happens is, you know that uh, our head of the femur has a spherical shape. It occupies two by third of a sphere. In cam impingement, the problem is between this head and the neck. That is, the spear shaped head won't be seen in cam impingement. That means the head of the femur won't be exactly like a spear. The first thing is that. The second thing, clearly you can demarcate the head and the neck. This is the neck, this is the head. And this line, this area, rigid area shows the head neck junction. In cam impeachment, you cannot distinguish between the head and neck junction. Or you cannot even distinguish between there is a head and neck. That means this seems to be continuous. This seems to be continuous. Okay, so the abnormality will be the femur head will won't be of a spherical shape. It will be only nearly spherical, not exactly this two by third of the space sphere. Okay, and this head neck junction won't be visible. It will be indistinguishable. We cannot distinguish the head neck junction. Here you can see it more clearly in the back side, posterior side. Head neck junction would be indistinguishable, and the neck and head would almost be like a continuous shape. And you see the head this is rounded like this it tapers or it narrows it narrows when it moves to the neck right it narrows when it moves to the neck that means it comes like this then it gets narrow this narrowing won't be there that means the head and neck would be seen almost continuous together just, let us just see see for example this is if this is our normal femur this is how it is it moves to the neck like this right and then you have the trochanter okay and then you have all the structures like this this is a normal femur and you can have this uh, almost spear like a femur head this is your neck of the femur and so on right what happens in your cam impingement is you cannot distinguish between the head and neck it would be almost like this right it will be almost continuous. There is no demarcation. This demarcation between the femur and its head vanishes. More correctly, it will be like this. More correctly, it will be like this. A continuous structure, right? That is cam impingement. The problem is with the, with the capital. That is the femoral head. Femoral head and neck cannot be distinguished in cam impingement. And we call it by a unique name known as Pistol grip appearance, pistol grip appearance or pistol grip deformity. So pistol grip deformity refers to the cam impingement. What do you mean by pistol grip? Not the calm now, not the modern pistols. The pistols that we have seen in old movies like Pirates of Caribbean, etc. You know that pistol. Now what is the peculiarity is the pistol will be like this. This is where we catch it and it comes on like this. Here you have the this one and it moves like this. Right, okay. I'm not uh, that good in drawing a pistol. So this is how that pistol will be. Similar to this, this grip, the purse or the place where we hold the pistol, similar to that will be the shape of this head of the femur and the neck. That will be almost a continuous structure. So we call it like a Pistol grip deformity. So pistol grip deformity is a classical feature of cam impingement and this is something that help you to diagnose in an x-ray which is very remarkable in the x-ray that is the pistol grip deformity. Yes, that's a general introduction about the cam impingement. The problem is with the femoral head and we call that deformity by name known as the pistol grip deformity. Deformity. Sometimes 
where was our handle the femur? Okay, that this one, right? Sometimes in between head and neck, there may be some extra bone formation. So mostly in between the femoral head and neck, in this area, there will be some extra bone formation. That may be from the epiphyseal plate. Epiphyseal plate that is seen here, there might be some extra bone formation. So that is what all about that is all about the cam impingement. Right? There might be some extra bone growth between the femoral head and neck. Now, what happens? What happens in this cam impingement? Can you imagine? You see that this is acetabulum and this is how the head of the femur is articulating. When this unique shape of the head and neck is going to be disturbed, especially during the movements like a flexion, there can be an impingement between the structures which causes the pain. And in movement like abduction, similar type of impingement can occur between this. Not in extension, but mostly in flexion and abduction. See, in flexion and in abduction. This can result in pain and restricted range of motion of flexion and abduction. That is one of the classical observation that is seen in patients with a cam impingement. You cannot distinguish, uh, you cannot say that when the person is standing or when he is at rest, he will have pain. But in extremes of range of motion, that is a flexion greater than 90 degree, a flexion greater than right angles, okay, and abduction, greater abduction, at that time, the patient will have pain. The pain is because, the pain is especially because, here you have the articular cartilage, here you have the articular cartilage and the labrum, it is like this. If you draw the acetabulum like this, the articular cartilage and labrum, the labrum will be here, right? The labrum will be here. And here you have the head of the femur, right? And when this head of the femur moves up and down, what happens? It can actually impinge or it can compress that labrum. And when that labrum is compressed, one of the unique peculiarity of the femur, the labrum in acetabulum or the hip joint is that it contains a lot of free nerve endings. And when there is free nerve endings, you know that it helps in proprioception. It helps in the proprioception, movement sensation, as well as when there is increased nerve ending, it can go for a great deal of pain, a source of pain, if there is an irritation. So in cam impingement, what happens is that this gets compressed, that is the labrum gets compressed, the articular cartilage gets compressed, and constant friction can result in the degeneration of the labrum, degeneration of the articular cartilage, and a great source of pain. The damage to the labrum will result in a great source of pain. And how can you, what is the clinical symptoms? The patient will have difficulty in flexion and abduction, especially higher degree of flexion and abduction. And in increased activity, for example, he's going for a running or jumping, some sports activities, or he's sitting for a long time. When you are sitting, your leg is almost in the flexion, is in the flexion. And when you get up from there after a long time, you will have pain. So these are the classical observation of cam impingement and how can we diagnose it very simple that is in the x-ray mostly you will have this pistol grip appearance that helps us in diagnosis of course MRI and CT you can go for that but um, with x-ray you can diagnose this in the frontal pain right that's all about the cam impingement along with this problem that is the problems are or the adverse effects are the damage to the labrum, the damage to the acetabular cartilage, the damage to the the damage caused by restricted range of motion. Along with that, the labrum can go for damage. The articular cartilage can become soft, and you call it malaise of the articular cartilage. It can go for softness, and there may be some degenerative changes, some other degenerative changes like as fibrillative changes and so on. That's not much to be remembered. Just remember, there will be pain, there will be restricted range of motion, there will be damage to the cartilage and the labrum. And restricted range of motion is classically occurring in greater degrees of flexion and abduction, as well as when you get up from flexion after a long time. That is our cam impingement. I hope it is clear. 
Now we move on to the pincer impingement. Pincer impingement. I can run this cam. Yes, right. And that is about the pincer. I told you pincer. P stands for the pelvic bone and the problem is with the acetabulum, right? The problem is with the acetabulum. What happens is that the only possibility is if the acetabulum is having reduced concavity and it is not covering the femur completely, can it go for impingement? No, it cannot go for impingement. It can go for impingement when there is an over coverage. So the classical problem will be an over coverage of acetabulum. Over coverage of acetabulum. Or overhanging acetabulum. You can see it. Overhanging acetabulum. Or increase in acetabular fossa. Increase in the concavity of acetabular fossa. I will explain that. That means, now you see, this acetabulum is normally covering the femoral head like this. Okay. Now you imagine that this acetabulum is a bit more concave shaped and it is covering the femoral head something like this. What can happen? When you move for the movement, even though there is no problem with the head and neck, it can cause in the compression. It can cause in impingement. Right? It can cause compression and it can cause impingement, especially when you are going for abduction movement especially when you are going for abduction movement. So that is the classical feature of pincer impingement. In pincer impingement, the problem between will be with the acetabulum. Acetabulum will be covering the femoral head over. It will have an over coverage. So whatever it is, coverage is good. But when it is over coverage, it again result in problems, restricted range of motion. And after the coverage of acetabulum, you have the glenoid lab, the acetabular labrum like this this is the acetabular covering let this be our femoral head okay and uh, let us um, in this pincer impingement let the covering be like this it is a bit more covering right it is a bit more covering okay and now where you will have your um, labrum the labrum will be here itself the labrum will be here, increasing the concavity of the acetabulum. Now you see, when you move for the abduction, when you move for any sort of movement, what happens? The labrum can get compressed. The articular cartilage can go for the degeneration. The articular cartilage can go for the degeneration. And that is your pincer impingement. In pincer impingement, there will be over covering of the acetabulum. Over covering can be due to many reasons. One, it may be due to the increased retroversion you see the acetabulum is slightly antiverted do you remember that the acetabulum is slightly antiverted if you want to know about that just look back to my old class on the articular cartilage and articular structures of the acetabulum including a specific discussion on labrum the link is given above just check it that and when there is a retroversion increased retroversion of the acetabulum it again result in the power coverage see antiversion it's fine but if it is retroverted backward rotated huh, it can result in over coverage or this acetabular fossa you imagine this is the acetabular fossa normal acetabular if it is having increased concavity the head of the femur can go more into it and it can result in this sort of impingement so pincer impingement is due to the problems with the acetabular fossa and our acetabulum over coverage of the cervix. So in X-ray, you can see that the acetabulum will be covering the femur much more than that is usual. Just look at this X-ray. Just look at this X-ray. See in the diagram, you can see what type of impingement, the pincer impingement. Let us also refer back to the cam impingement. Just see the diagram. In cam impingement, what is happening? Can you see the pistol grip appearance? I hope you can see that. We have uh, denoted a pre pistol actually for that. See the pistol grip appearance. So this all can result in the normal hip, normal one we are showing it to. And see this pincer grip appearance and the cam impingement. Just remember that. So that when you get an x-ray, you are thorough by that. Okay. To the track. And that is what about pincer impingement. And pincer impingement can also cause the same thing that it can result in acetabular damage, 
cerebral damage, articular cartilage damage, and more importantly, the problem will be in abduction. If you go for the abduction, you have increased greater pain. Not the flexion, but in abduction, you have greater pain. You have pain, you can have pain in the flexion, but it is more pronounced in abduction. That's how we discuss the CAM and pincer impingement. Of course, about the diagnosis of both this impingement, I told you, is the X-ray, MRI, and CP. And X-ray itself gives you a great deal of information. Like in pincer impingement, we can have what type of deformity? Don't forget a uh, pistol grip deformity. And in uh, sorry, in CAM impingement and in the pincer impingement, you can see an overcoverage of the acetabulum with the old, um, with the um, x-ray that you have already seen just correlate with that okay and the symptoms and what are the symptoms in general i told you earlier itself there will be pain in around the hip joint there will be pain around the hip joint that is more due to the labral damage okay there may be pain there will be pain and there will be pain in flexion greater than right ankle or for a greater a greater degrees of flexion when you go for a greater degree of flexion more chance of impingement and it can result in pain right and there may be pain in excessive activities where you go for jogging you go for running or you sit for a long time and you get up then you will have pain and if it is cam or impingement definitely in greater degrees of abduction you have the pain that's all about the CAM and pincer impeachment and about the treatment this is an educational tutorial and a lecture so we won't be discussing much on the treatment session we will have a later a video on the treatment session but the treatment includes uh, pain reducing methods and most importantly you ask the patient for go for rest because the simultaneous or continuous irritation of the labrum can result in more serious problems you ask the patient go for rest take some rest Physiotherapy management is very efficient. When you have the medical management, we are you have injections, where you have the surgery, whether you have um, the medicines, the surgery, especially the arthroscopic surgery, is very effective in the treatment of CAM and pincer impeachment. It can reconstruct the deformities existing in that joint. That's all about CAM and pincer impeachment. So always remember when you have the femoral acetabular impeachment, that's of three types: CAM, pincer, and combined. In combined, you can have both the problems. Every each of the problems, there may be problem with the femoral head. Okay, there may be problem with the acetabulum. Both can coexist together, and you know that. And both coexist together, it can create more problems for the patient. So that's how we wind up the CAM and pincer impingement.